I've had my ROG Ally for about a year now, and while it's been an incredible device for gaming, Windows, let's just say, is not exactly helping me achieve the pick-up-and-play console vibe I'm looking for. Every time I pick up my Ally after a few weeks, I tend to spend the first 15 minutes installing Windows updates, Armory Crate updates, and sometimes even digging into a random text file just to fix a game's resolution, which is not ideal. On top of that, the battery life. Being that it's an Ally V1, it's frustrating when it dies before my wife's episode of The Bachelorette finishes, which I totally wasn't watching as well. So today we're fixing those problems. A better OS and a better battery. Let's go. First up, let's talk about the OS, Bazite. If you caught my Optiplex video, you already know how much I love Bazite. It's basically a super lightweight Steam OS fork that lets AMD devices like the ROG Ally unlock those awesome Steam Deck game mode features, which means no bloated Windows desktop with taskbars, background processes, and updates, just enough resources to run Steam and your games, which of course is the most important part of the Ally, is playing the games. But the best part is you don't actually have to ditch Windows completely since Bazite supports dual booting, and you can even share all your Windows games with the Bazite side to save storage space, which I did here. We'll cover the install steps for Bazite in just a moment, but before that, let's tackle the other big problem, which is battery life. Battery life fixes for the Ally swing quite widely. Some people straight up dremel out the back of their Ally and strap a laptop battery to it, whereas I went the less scorched earth solution, which was in finding this incredibly compact NUI portable battery. I hope I'm saying that right. NUI? INUI, but it's the smallest 25,000 milliamp hour battery I've ever seen. And although it's roughly the same weight as other batteries, because you still need that battery density in there, its compact design is quite a game changer for gaming on the couch or in bed or even on a plane. And with it, I found that I can at least double my playtime on the Ally, usually getting about two and a half hours of gaming now, which is way better than the usual hour and a bit I was getting before. NUI also has a slightly larger version of this battery with a convenient built-in phone holder, which is great for multitasking. Both are linked in the description, and thanks to NUI for sending over these batteries for me to test out in this video. Now back to Bazite. The installation process will look pretty similar to any other computer if you've dual booted Linux with Windows before. The only catch being that this is a small compact computer with only a controller built in, so I do recommend plugging in a USB-C adapter with a keyboard and mouse since the install process is likely not touch optimized because it surely wasn't for me. And before you boot up your flash drive, you might also want to resize your partition using the Windows Disk Manager or whatever your preferred tool is just to make it that much easier in the installation process. To make the USB drive itself, I recommend going to Bazite's website for the latest steps, but usually you'll just grab an ISO or an image and then flash it with a tool like Rufus or Belena Etcher. And then to boot to that flash drive, I prefer to keep it simple and just go to the Windows settings, navigate over to Update and Security, Recovery, and then Advanced Startup, which will then reboot to a screen that lets you choose to boot from your USB drive. If you prefer, you can also just boot up the ROG Ally with the volume down, sometimes up key held, which should then get you into the UEFI or Boot Manager which might be worth doing because at the time you choose to do this project, it may recommend that you disable secure boot in the BIOS. So again, consult the documentation for the latest on that. But finally, you can cruise through the installer, consulting the documentation wherever uncertain. And if all goes well, a few minutes later, you should be looking at your new ROG Ally Steam Deck thing. Once you're all signed in, here are a few general Bazite tips that I found really helpful with the ROG Ally. First, to set things like your TDP or your RGB lighting, or even what your paddles do, you'll now double click the ROG button to get to this little menu that's provided by Bazite. If you press the ROG button once, you'll get the Steam Quick Settings, which is more akin to what you'd see on the Steam Deck. That button on the left is now your Steam slash Xbox button, which is good to know. And finally, to get into the desktop mode of Bazite, you'll go to the power menu and you'll see an option to boot to the desktop near where you have the option to turn off the system entirely. Once we're in desktop mode, a really handy thing to add right now is a shortcut to boot back into Windows. And to create that, we'll just open up a terminal and either with the virtual keyboard or with a plugged in keyboard, the command is ujust space setup dash boot dash windows dash steam. And that's it. It's just a handy little script that's baked into Bazite apparently. And that creates this nice little entry in your menu, which you can then press and it'll reboot into windows. The downside being is that now you have to boot into Bazite and then reboot into windows if you wanted to get to windows in the first place. But if anyone knows a sleeker boot method, please let me know in the comments. And while we're in desktop mode, now let's cover how to share our windows games from our windows partition over to our Bazite partition so we don't have to download them all over again, especially the ones that are made 
made for Windows in the first place. The first thing we'll need to do is to tell Bazite to properly mount the NTFS partition used by Windows whenever we start up Bazite, which will let it safely talk to that partition. The steps for that are nicely laid out in this guide actually created by Valve, so I won't read out the steps line by line, but I will link to it in the description. And here's an example of what that final FS tab line looked like when I mounted my disk. When that's done, we can run the command mount a or sudo mount a to follow those new instructions and make sure our NTFS drive is mounted in Bazite. And from there, we just need to create links between the Windows folder for a game and Linux, which are called symbolic links or symlinks. And the command looks like this. It will vary a little bit depending on what you called the folder where you mounted your NTFS drive. In my case, it's just called game disk. And essentially with this command, we're just telling Bazite to treat this folder from another partition as if it lives right there inside our Linux Steam folder, as if we downloaded it right from Bazite. You can create as many links as you want for as many games as you want. And then in Steam, you can do one of two things. You can either enable Proton across the board, which I try to steer away from because it makes it a little unclear on which games have a Linux optimized version and which games are made for Windows. Instead, I like to go to each game individually and set the compatibility to Proton Experimental, so that way I can enable Proton on a game-by-game -game basis. And so, for example, for Rocket League, it has a Linux version technically, but it has been dead for quite a while. And so I go to the Rocket League game, I go to compatibility, set it to Proton Experimental, and then it says, oh, you want to install the Windows version of that. And then when I click install, you'll see it quickly change from downloading to verifying because it recognizes, oh, I already have Rocket League files so I'll just verify that I have all the right ones, update my little internal Steam database, and if all checks out, then you'll just get a play button where you can then play your Windows games from your Windows install on Bazite through Proton about as slick as you would on a Steam Deck, which feels pretty cool. In terms of raw performance, I couldn't tell much difference between how games ran on Windows versus Bazite, which is impressive because almost all of my games were Windows games being translated through Proton. That being said, things do feel snappier on Bazite because booting into Bazite slash SteamOS is super fast, and in no time I'm booting up a game and playing instead of getting distracted by the various pop-ups or little notifications from Windows or what update they want to push on me soon, and rather I'm up and game in almost under a minute, which at the end of the day is the exact thing you want to do with a gaming handheld that you purchase to enjoy games in little pockets of time in your week. Plus it gives the Ally more of a high-end console-like feel instead of feeling like a Windows laptop glued to a controller. As far as battery life goes, it feels more efficient, but that could be just a placebo effect, so it probably averages pretty close to Windows, but either way it's super boosted with the NUI external battery we mentioned earlier. But how about you? Will you be installing Bazite on your ROG Ally, or are you sticking with Windows? Let me know in the comments below, and while you're there, let me know if you'd like to see more Linux content like this. Please subscribe to have on the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.